Ray, how's it going? Good. How are you? Happy Fan. last live of the year. Ah, yes. <laughs> it feels so real. <laughs> and I am trying you? to get all the things going here. This is going to be this is going to be a fun topic too. I'm excited to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, me too. How's everyone doing? Let me get the chat going on the side. You guys know the deal. If you if you want to jump in and, and ask us questions or have conversations with us, go ahead and drop your your comments in the chat and we'll get to them right away. We've got a fun topic, we I do. think. Yeah. So they've heard us talk about the three legged stool before. And if you haven't, I encourage you guys to go check out our YouTube channel where we talk about books, courses and workbooks being a three legged stool. It's basically three products in a product line. Um, that uh, you can use to leverage your IP. And we'll talk a little bit about how to plan and leverage that in your business this year. So yes. good stuff. So what's going on? What's going on in your life? Um, winding down. Just checking a few last boxes, or fulfilling a few final commitments for the year so I can take ah. a break. Take and a break. yeah, so I'm a little fatigued. From <laughs> well, you've been a busy. Really, yes, from a really productive year. And I yeah. know it's not going to last all that long, right? It's like I always go into my breaks going, oh, I, you know, a well deserved break time away from work. Right. And then I get to the point where I'm counting down the days to going back to work. And then I'm sneaking work in. <laughs> Just describe working. what that describe what that looks like what is sneaking work in while you're um, on the break so i i only have one remaining party in the oversight committee <laughs> so it used to be uh my daughter and my husband so now that we're empty nesters um byron is the only member of the oversight committee it's like are you working what are you doing and i'm like no i'm just online shopping what do you mean <laughs> just on Facebook. I promise I'm um, not writing a book on my phone. <laughs> yes. I bet not, who would do that? No one would do something crazy like that. But, so yeah. Also, he's up way later than I am. And I'm up way earlier than he is. So I can always get in a little something. But right now I'm really, uh, I was given a, a, a stack of books that I want to read by one person. And then I have all the other books that I have purchased. You know, the big lie we tell ourselves, which is today, I'm not going to buy any new books to read. And then, of course, you know, do we even get to lunch before we bought a book? Right. So I have lots of couch time and porch time that I am at, in front of the fire time. I'm looking forward to just doing a lot of recreational reading and relaxing and hanging out with family and friends this holiday break time. Absolutely. Like, I, and I, I look at it as, and I, this is probably not the healthiest way to look at it, but I get to knock out some things that make me, I used to feel this way about fitness, you know, mm -hmm. I get to do a couple of things for my, for my work, you know, writing projects, things like that, that will make me feel better that they're done and I'll have oh, less yeah. distractions and 100%. less obligations. So I wake up like excited. I'm like, oh man, if I could take one hour, I can get all this stuff done. I'll yeah. feel good. Yeah, and then that's right. I had uh, Tammy tell me one time, you're, you're working. What are you doing? I'm like, trust me, I'm going to feel better that this is done than if I just did nothing and didn't get this done. Like, yeah, it's kind of like with workouts. So on holidays, I used to wake up and I was like, all right, I'm going to go get an extra awesome workout in this morning before yes. everyone starts showing up. Yes. And um, it made me feel better. I felt good about eating all the food. I felt like I started my day right. All those things. To me, it's kind of the same mentality. Yes. Well, I start so, my days the same way, pretty much 365 days a year. <laughs> you do? I do. Yep. And I like it like that. Heck yeah, man. If it's working. I like why, it like that. And I think it also is working. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. also working. Um, that the, the days that I'm not working, right? Like, working. Hold on. Let me put on my working face. Working. Um, <laughs> working. Like today is a work day. Very, working very serious. Now. Very, we've been very serious all morning. Haven't we Lucas? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's 
it's a good well, we, we did good work though. We we did discuss okay. plans. We've outlined yeah. a book. Yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> it certainly does not feel like work. I will no. say that. But on days that are less work workish, mm -hmm. um, that's when I work out a little bit longer. That's when I read a little bit longer. My my morning routine is a little extended because I don't have the urgency of the the clock. Right. I'm looking forward to less urgency around the clock and that commitments that involve other people. Right. That are workish. Yes, workish. Workish. <laughs> Cuz they're not work, they're just workish. I've decided. Yes. That's what we're going to call it. I like that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, my life basically consists of having really amazing conversations and mm. doing cool things. So it's I'm certainly not complaining. <clears throat> so can I bring up a workish thing that's not a workish thing that's also one of my holiday looking forward to's every year? Is it a Mrs. Smith pumpkin pie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I won't, I won't, uh, I can either confirm nor deny that there were three new Mrs. Smith pumpkin pies brought in my house last night. <laughs> we're stashing. I, I'm getting ready for this, okay. for the right. can't, can't find a pumpkin pie season. Um, my TBR list <sighs> is my guilty work over mm -hmm. the holidays. That's also yeah. like, if you're looking for a way to like, get like make progress in your yeah. professional life but also yeah. scratching a non-professional itch i i love using the holiday season to catch up on my tbr so luckily for us since we both dabble in the fiction world sometimes that involves just reading really good books from people that you've been looking forward to yep. and then on the non-fiction side i get to i get to read this over mm -hmm. the next two weeks so, so good it's so good so yeah, I'm gonna read. Um, I Dan read Sullivan. that in the summer. I read that right after, right when it was released, and it's really good. So 10x is easier than 2x by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Min Benjamin Hardy. Yes, yes. I should start putting doctor on my book covers, and then people go, "What? What did you do related to this stuff in your doctorate?" And you go, "Oh no, I think it's engineering." <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> so if I had studied psychology, I could just put it on everything. <laughs> Right. When was this book published? Let's see. Uh, what, 10X is too, better May, than 2X? May 9th. So I think I read it on May 9th. Oh, did you get it the day it came May out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Gotcha. I got the audio book and uh, I was particularly effective in reaching my goals uh, related to the gym because of that book. Ah. Uh, because I would just want to listen. The cool thing about the audiobook, so now I'm going to ruin you reading this book for you. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry, not I'll sorry. I'll forget. <laughs> is no, you won't. Because at the, I don't know if the book has this. You can look in there, but at the end of every chapter, there is a conversation between Ben and Dan. Oh. That's in the audiobook that may or may not be in the. Did they do something like that at the end of the physical book? Uh, let me see here. And now you're saying it's just one chapter, which is a conversation? No, no, no. At the end of every chapter, oh, okay. there's a conversation between Ben and Dan. I would think that's an audio book exclusive, but let me see. I would think that it might be, but they might have transcribed it. Let's see. Chapter so this one, I think I'm at the end of a chapter. Then there's this great conversation between the co-authors. And I did a lot of extra treadmill time which is, doesn't make me sad. <laughs> now there's a uh, chapter takeaways, but there's no transcript mm. of a conversation. So now you have to get the audiobook. <clears throat> I actually like that as a kind of a differentiator between the audiobook and a You think because I'm live, I'm not going to you're not going to get in trouble. <laughs> is it Rogue? This is Rogue. Come here. <laughs> Come lay down. Rogue. That's a good puppy. That's a good puppy. Okay, yes, I love you. Okay. Yes, lay down. Rogue's been on a, a a bit of a rampage today. Well, she has, she, you know, I think I have, I I will stand on this hill. I will, I will not die on this hill, but I will stand on this hill, and I will say that I think animals are humans trapped in animal bodies. Oh. 
because okay. their nonverbal communication is excellent. They always get what they want. They have a, a, a horde of people that are their servants and they never really ask for anything. We just know what they want and give them what they want. And if we don't, then they pitch little fits. So I think being a human trapped in an animal body, Rogue knows when mom is busy. And that's when she goes and does the naughty things. And then looks at me all cute. <laughs> like, but you love me, mom, and I'm cute and I'm a dog. So how much trouble can I get in? So I can go bad puppy and whatever. And then, then I feel terrible because she's so cute and she's a dog. So they're winning. I'm oh, Ella. Humans who did really good things. And so now it's like, now you get to be a pampered pet. <laughs> Ella watches me like a hawk. Like when I sit down in my chair and eat, because mm -hmm. Tammy and I eat in the living room, the kids, the kids are like yeah. on their own, like, you know, they're eating yeah. in like different or places. Not formal here either. Yeah. Um, so we'll be sitting there eating and I swear that dog, it, it's either Pavlov's response uh -huh. or she's just like. Scrape the end of the plate and she's like right on it, right? As soon as my plate is set in my lap, she's there. Like right next oh, to me. Of and, and oh, she's yes. like across the room doing her own thing. She could be taking a nap, like completely unaware. Yes. But when that plate gets set down, she's aware and up. And it's like, we just Does laugh she get because. The plate? Does she no, get the plate no, no, her? no. We've never given her food off our plates. Oh, so she's just living for the day. She's just like, dude, I want your attention. And I know you just stopped eating. So let's go. I can honestly say I have not given Rogue any food off of my plate today. <laughs> 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 well, this not, day right not, here. <laughs> not to like give everyone the pit bull education, but if you own a pity or any type of terrier related to pit bulls, we have a Staffordshire Staffordshire terrier. She, she's allergic to every damn thing under the sun, including chicken. Who, what, what animals allergic to eat like dogs allergic to eating chicken? Mm, I think well, um, is too. I think our vet asked us to go to lamb. She can only eat a very specific type of food because even salmon was giving her a hard time. Um, she, she can't eat. Yeah. She's like only eats rabbit protein. Okay. All right. Yep. Do you feed her just food for dogs? Um, yeah, she just has dog food. It's a very specific blend of rabbit. Is it called just food for dogs? That's what we Oh no. Oh no. no. That's the brand that we have just food for dogs. So yeah, we're not that bougie. Yeah, they eat uh, they eat better than we do. Yeah. She eats better than we do. Now we do mix pumpkin and green beans in with her food yes, because we started giving her green beans as a treat, which yes. she really likes. So that that fill because you know Ella was putting on a little bit of weight. Um, she was getting a little thick, so they were like, "Hey, stop giving her like giving her a full scoop of food twice a day. Give her half a scoop of food with some green beans and some pumpkin, pumpkin and the pumpkin helps her." Okay digestive system all right but well anyways. so anyway but off of off of the dog topic <laughs> and back to the tbr pile yes i'm really excited about all the reading i'm gonna get to do yeah i'm just so excited to have hours of uninterrupted reading yeah it's it's one of the things i feel a little guilty about like i, I would say that this job. like it's your well, job it is and it, it, it's also like an obligation that i feel like i have toward other authors and, and, and friends that are, that are in the yeah, same yeah. genre. And because I want to support them. Yeah. So I want to read their book and give them a nice review and send them a nice message and all the things. And I'm like, they stacked up, you know? And yeah. I would say that, uh, it's probably one of my guilts of the year is like, if I, if you make a really aggressive writing and publication schedule, you have less time to do those things. And I've just been, a little too busy to be able to catch up on my casual reading. So normally it wouldn't take me weeks to read a 350 page book, but it's taken me weeks to read a 350 page book. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, uh, anyway. I, yeah and I, I usually read before I go to sleep, but um, you know, that's only good for a couple of pages. Then I'm nodding off. <laughs> I will say, I will say we had our EBM kickoff last week. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I think I'm just now, coming out of that hangover. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a um, lot. It was a lot. Um, and I listened to Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, which is like the it book right now. Have you listened to that? It's romanticy. 
No, I have not listened to it yet. But you know, after you told me about it, I saw. uh, We see it it everywhere. It's literally everywhere on every list, everywhere. Well, I think it may have been JT Ellison's Substack. I think she mentioned one of the other books in the series, but I may be wrong. So, JT, if you're watching this, don't kill me if I'm. It's the second book just came out. So everyone who read the first book Hmm. is now reading the second book. Gotcha. It was 20 hours of audio. In one book? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's was it's fantasy? Romanticy. Okay. Well that yeah, fantasy books are just huge. <laughs> but it's but it's I would say it's I would say it's more fantasy than rom- romance, to okay. be fair. Um that it's a fantasy book with a romantic but Element. there's no romanticy work word that's Phantomance? Like, how do we do it backwards? <laughs> <laughs> you did way better trying than I would have. <laughs> like, how do I, I make how do I make these two words? Because I think romanticy goes very well, right? You can put yeah. kissing at the end of something, but mance, <laughs> fan mance, a fan mance, a phantom mance. <laughs> That's a new genre. It's a whole new genre now. Um, I so anyway, it was have... 20 hours and I was really squeezing it in to get it done hmm. uh, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, that's a, that's a long one. Yeah. And I mostly really liked it. Mostly really liked it. Yeah. It's not, the, the, I'm not, I'm not particularly a romance reader. Right. And I definitely am not a fantasy reader. But as JT pointed out, if it's a book everyone's talking about, you go outside of your normal jam to check it out. And the writing is very good. Excellent. Well, yeah. It probably has a really good storyline to it, even though it's, you know, yes, outside the storyline, the storyline kind of gets you because mm-hmm. you're right away cheering for the protagonist and all the things. So, yes. So that was my, um, non my fiction reading and then my nonfiction reading has all been client books mm. so i have all the all the client books that are coming out boom 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 january february and i think either march or beginning of april so well my you know one of the things i try to do during the holidays is read my paperbacks and hardcovers because i'm always on the go and uh-huh. i'm reading on my e-reader so much yeah. so uh, when you go to all these conferences and things, I end up picking up these paperback copies mm-hmm. of books. And so I have to get through some of those, but, um, but what I've been, uh, paying attention to on my e-reader has been the wild dark from Catherine Silva, Ooh. who's great. It's a series and it's a bit of a thriller, uh, horror, but it's like, if it's, I don't want to spoil it, but it's really good, especially if you like nature in your stories. Okay. Uh, because it's basically like if the woods were taking over the world, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Really cool. And then, um, I'm also, um, into uh, the woods, if the woods were yeah. taking over the world. Yeah. Yeah. All so, right. Um, and then I'm reading, um, I just started, uh, autumn Gothic, um, from, uh, Brian Bowyer and that he, he writes some pretty extreme stuff. So I'm, I'm expecting a good swift kick in the gut this weekend <laughs> as I get into that one. Um, but then I've got a, I've got a, a nice soft Gothic one on the back side of that kind of plan to ease me down. Cause Brian's stuff is pretty wild. So, all right. So there you go. That's kind of what's been going on in my, and you have your book that's coming in February, yeah. right? So is it, where January. are you in that? Yeah, January twenty sixth is the publication date. Oh, all right, Make I am. Note. I'm jamming out a couple of chapters a week, and we are in the home stretch. I'm in the final act of the book right now, so I will be done. Well, let's let's say if I'm if I wave my magic wand and everything goes as planned, I'll be done writing the book by in in two weeks. Um, and it's right around sixty thousand words in that state. So, okay. but you know, I, I never you never really know how it's going to be until it's over. So I'm just kind of riding the wave right now. And it's been, it's been really good, but. um, So do you know how it ends or are you pantsing? Oh, I know how it ends. Okay. My, my problem is when I plot, I plot very high level. I don't get into super detail on each chapter. I just like put the high point 
and that leaves the door open to a lot of pantsing in accordance with the plot that I've written. So okay. what ends up happening inevitably is I'll have like one high point and it takes one to two chapters instead of one, right? Ah. To get, and, and you only know when you're writing it and it feels natural to go a certain way. So I tend to be a pretty succinct writer anyways, but this book has been a little bit different because I've been letting it breathe a little bit more mm. um, because I don't have a ceiling for a word count. So it's like, if it's 60,000, it's 60,000. If it's 70,000, it's 70,000. It's like, who cares? Just get the high points in and make right. sure that the book is great. So I'm not turning down anything that adds value to the story right now. It's like, oh, that'd be cool. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, that'd be okay. cool. All right. It goes in. <laughs> so um, I did change the end though, from what I originally planned. Halfway through the book, I said, yeah, this is definitely going a different way than what I originally planned. And it's a pretty significant difference, but it doesn't change the end scene. Okay. So the end, all the events still happen, but the way they result, the results of those events are a little different. And is this the first big book in a long series? It's a first novel in a, at least a three, a three, at novel least a series. trilogy. Okay. Yeah. All right. right now it's planned to be a trilogy, but you know, we'll see. Okay. Yep. Very That's cool. That's it. We hey, have a we friend. Got, we do. Jen. Jen, is that you? It says, hello, friends. Facebook user. <laughs> Guessing it's Jen. Unknown Facebook user. Unknown. Well, Facebook known. User. A known unknown. As opposed True. to an unknown unknown. That's right. Yes. <laughs> see, now I have to put it on screen so people know what we're talking yes. about. Facebook user. Facebook for, user. For. So Gen we, it's Karen. Ah. Oh, Karen is getting ready for a trip. Should I ask where? <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's top secret, but okay. You know, we'll let her share if she wants to share. A little holiday trip? Yeah. Nice. Gonna go see the kid and the grandkids and I know where that is. <laughs> and I did say grandkids because some are furry, some are not, but they're grandkids all the same. There you go. Yes. That's awesome. Um, so let's talk about building a profitable product line in 2024. Yeah, this you know, is we a... like to talk about prosperity and profitability and yeah. And this is a, a bit of a follow up to the conversation uh -huh. we had last well, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, um, yeah. where we talked about like just planning how to take lessons learned from 23 and roll them into 24. Right. Yep. So, you know, if you take that plus the topic of um, the uh, the three legged stool that we've talked about yep. in previous episodes, it's like, how do you leverage that in your plan for next year? And the three legged stool, for those that don't know, is the book, the workbook and the course. Yeah. Right. Or some kind of a companion. I'm actually right. doing one for a client. that's an action guide because it's just going to be in the front matter as a, uh, a book optimizer and a list builder. Awesome. So it could be uh, a journal, a workbook, a companion guide, a companion planner, an action guide, something downloadable. So when you're when you're building your product line, the first product in our world anyway is usually a book, a nonfiction right. book that is inspirational, transformational, um, something of that nature. And then you want to have a companion something that is also generally a book of some sort, workbook guide, companion planner, what I just said, that is a companion that goes right along with the book that allows the folks who have read your book to put it into practice. And the next level in this product line is your bailiwick, which is a course. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you can kind of uh, yeah, I've had asked someone asked me last week, doesn't matter if you have the course before the book or the book before the course. My preference, just like your preference, is to have the book first yep. um, for several reasons, one of which it's so much easier to it's more accessible. It's usually priced more accessibly. It's easier to get your hands on. Yep. It's easier to share all those things. It's also um, it carries more. Uh, let me let me see. How do I put this without offending any of my fellow course people? Because it doesn't offend me whatsoever as a is an author and a course guy, but for some people they'd be like, why, why is a book more important than a course? It, it carries a certain amount of authority does. Um, and, and familiarity. I think for there's tons of people out there that still don't have or haven't taken 
online courses, although it might sound nuts to people, yeah. but almost everyone has had books in their hands. Um, and it's a, it's a totally different right. uh, creature. But anyways, I, if you have the book first and then the workbook and then the course, that's fine. If you have the book first and then the course and then the workbook, that's fine. But uh, it would be a rare exception that you'd see a workbook before either of those two things. Yes. <laughs> Yes, right. Karen said she decided to do a workbook companion to her editing book, and you're welcome. Um, but I think that will make it so much more effective for people. You can you, putting something into practice. I'm reading an advanced copy of a book, and so when it comes out, I'll talk about it. But one of the things that the author says is that if you want to be uh, a well respected speaker, practice is very important right um and he, he what is it that he says uh it's not going to come to me but he basically says don't do anything off the cuff don't just figure it out don't just say yeah sure I, i'm a paid speaker and get up and just riff right you want to make sure that you are practicing 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 put your talk together and so there's something very powerful about that practice that allows you to um, deliver something that isn't practiced, that mm -hmm. isn't rehearsed. It doesn't feel rehearsed. It doesn't feel canned. It doesn't feel like something you've said over and over and over again. I think some of the best keynoters I've ever seen, I've seen them give the same keynote several times. And every single time it's fantastic. It's not like, oh, I've heard this before. Right. It feels extemporaneous. It feels like you're having a conversation with the speaker, that they're having a conversation with you, but it's clearly some something, some material that they have command of. And where your workbook comes into play is it allows the person who's read your words to put it into practice. The one thing about this book that I'm reading is I know because it's done through a traditional publisher that there is no workbook. Hmm that I have to go back and read the content and do my own workbook. And if I were working with this author, he's on my wish list, by the way, to do a, a bespoke book with at some point, um, I would say, let's do a book and a workbook and a course. Like, let's do these things together because you're giving people very great concrete processes that I am gonna go back and do step by step by step, but I'm gonna have to do it in my own journal on my own paper in a, in a way that's not going to make him any more money. Right. Right. So when you're thinking about next year being the year that you write your, let's say it's your first book for you, Lucas, it's going to be your next book, your next nonfiction book. Mm -hmm. Think about it from an extension perspective. Think about it as a, a happy meal, right? You wouldn't just go buy a cheeseburger. You would buy the cheeseburger I would get the shake. Wouldn't you get the shake? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I'm, yeah, yeah I mean, if I'm, yeah. If I'm, yeah, I'm going all in, if I'm Let's going and the fries, large I'm fries, thinking, large fries, but maybe tater tots, maybe sweet potato fries. Is this a compromise for the milkshake? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're doing. <laughs> I'm saying put together, put to, think of your, Think of your book as an entry point, and instead of ending with one book, mm. end with multiple products that would serve your reader or customer or client in the, at the highest level. Right. And the way that people consume their content, consume the knowledge that they want, and, and embark on their transformation is a little different for everyone. So you want to have the ability for people to say, well, I'm not really a, 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 a learner by reading. I'm a learner by doing. Mm -hmm. I, want, I need a place to do what you're suggesting, which is what's happening in this book that I'm reading right now is I, I, am, I immediately am skipping over the homework section because I'm like, okay, I've got to come back and put that into practice. So there are no instructions of the in the book, which need to be added. So this is, you know, this is inside baseball for you. When you're doing a book and you know you're gonna have a workbook, tell people to read through the book. Just read, read all the way through and enjoy the read. And then plan a second read alongside your companion. Right. 
and then go through and fill it out. So if you were to read, you must write a book and have, I must write my book workbook next to you, read all the way through the book so you understand what's about to happen. Hmm. Right? Isn't right. it on Big Bang Theory where they say, regardless of what happens in this Star Wars movie, we're going to be back tomorrow to watch it again, right? Whether it's good or it's bad, we're going to watch it again. So right. whether you do the process or you don't right away, plan to come back and go through it again and give people a place to go through and put your advice into practice. Hmm. And for those people who are, who are um, blended learners, who learn from a conversation or through videos or audios or auditory learners, their kinesthetic learners, you also want to provide a course for them to walk them through, yes, that same material, but in a deeper, broader way. And I'll let you talk about the course aspect and why that's important, why it's different from a book, because some people just go, oh, I don't need to go to the conference. I don't need to attend the seminar. Right. I don't need to do the course. I can just read the book and I'll be just fine. Thank you very much. But I think there's some missing things. I'd love you to talk about those. Yeah, I mean, you have the ability to well, well, for one, the you have a little bit more in the moment control over the content and release schedule of a course than you do a book. And I'm telling you that as someone that self-publishes nonfiction. So like even as a self-published author, I even though I have all that control over the content and I have uh I can update files and things like that, I can't um th the person who's bought that book, they have the book they have, right? Like they don't and it doesn't update it. behind them. Right. Right. Uh, also, the people that are buying the book moving forward, even though I may have a new change to it today, um, I can't keep changing the same book over and over again without getting myself in trouble with a, a platform that I'm publishing through um, without right. having to almost look like I didn't do the book the proper way. Like You can't just keep updating all the time. And, and one of the nice things about a, a course is you can add and, and remove and, and tweak things throughout the life cycle of that course fairly easily. It's expected and no one really bats an eye as long as you're not taking value away from the product. As long as you're adding value, people are ecstatic that you're doing those things. Okay. Um, and But guess what? They don't have to buy it twice to get those changes. Whereas like if you have a, a, a course that is uh, delivered only live, well, you got your experience. And if you want the updated version, you're going to have to attend it live again. So when I talk about the flexibility being a key, it's mostly with the um, on-demand or a hybrid type course. Now, that's one huge benefit. The second thing is that the the, the book is a physical product, even the electronic book, right? Even an ebook is is a physical product. It has a beginning and an end. It has right. barriers to, to expansion. Um, you may package a book a certain way, have your cover designed a certain way, and you've got some limitations about page count, and size, and all those things. With a course, there are none of those things. You can you can have far more information. Uh, you can go further than the book does, and you can do that on purpose too. You might you know know that the reader needs to have a very specific product delivered. They need to understand very certain things about that topic, the fundamental certain elements, and you may take them somewhere like a course to give them even more information, expand on it, provide links and access to other resources like checklists, templates, um, all the things that we put in our courses. To recommendations. Add value. Yeah, recommendations. Those are recommendations. Even breaking uh, news. I even, yeah, breaking news. <laughs> breaking news, right? Like a like a yeah. change. I don't know how many times I've updated. Oh yeah, uh, publishing PhD. Yep, and um, I even have a uh, time. I even Makes have sense. in the in the monetize your book of the course. Um, I have specifically I in that book, I put a free course of resources together for readers of that book. So if they've read that book. They can go to my course site and they can enroll in a resource bundle for people who have read that book. It'll be relevant to them and I'm adding value. Now that's a place I can change by the minute if I want. If I want to change referrals, if I want to add people, deduct people, I can do it there and I don't have to worry about doing it in the book because it's a more flexible place to do it. So that's a complimentary product that's free, right? And I use that, by the way, also as a way to capture people for the email list. So yep. if they go from my book to my site, they're not just going to my site and signing up for an email. I'm giving them a ton of resources in exchange for that email address. 
um, like here, download all this free material. It's, it's yours. Have fun with it. Um, and, and, and that's a reward for, for trusting me with your email address. So the course gives you the ability to do those things in a way that, you know, is a little bit uh, outside the norm for a book. Yep. I so I have a question. I think this is really impactful for people because this is the way my brain works. So I think it's valuable. Okay, great. <laughs> so wow. so <clears throat> when I, when I met on array and I'm like, this is great. I want to do the thing. I want the book. I want the workbook. I want this world. Um, yeah. I having not gone through it yet at that point, I was, I could see that I needed a certain amount of time and energy planning um, to make it happen the way an expert was telling me I should. Um, when we talk about the three-legged stool, we're talking about multiple products. So if I'm going to build a, a product line, if I'm going to take, let's say the, you must market your book and I'm going to put that, it's like one of my key things for the year. I'm going to develop that product line about marketing books. And I know I'm going to do a book, a workbook and a course. Mm -hmm. I know I've basically got three related products and I'm going to develop them somewhat simultaneously, but not. And mm -hmm. If I'm a first time author, it's going to be different than if I've done this a couple of times and I'm a little bit comfortable moving in and out of these products. So for a first time author, a consultant, coach, someone that does this for a living, they want to bring that nonfiction book into their world. Um, when should I plan on the book first? Like what's the right time to start that? Is it, should I publish that book in December or should I start planning it in January and release it at a certain time? Like, what does that look like? Well, I think the reason I want, at least I wanted to have this conversation this time of year is because I want people to end next year. So if you put yourself on a year track, mm -hmm. let's not go one more year without you having not just a book, but also a, a workbook or a companion of some kind in a course. Mm -hmm. Let's add three opportunities for people to discover your work, to work with you and build your income, build your empire at the same time. Um, so I would put yourself on a 12 month publication schedule and I would not publish in December. I would plan on publishing in January of 25. Okay. So a nice, a nice long runway to think through the job of the book in your business, the job that the workbook will do to help the book to work for your reader okay. and the role that the course would play in your overall business. If you don't have any books, any workbooks and any courses, and you are a consultant or a coach or a speaker, you probably have people who say, you should write a book, you must write a book. And so you have to lay the groundwork first. You've got to figure out where does the, where do these assets fit into your business? And then how are you going to develop them? And when are you going to release them? Now, 13 months is a really long time in our world, Lucas. And so we're going to sit a year from now um, with probably many projects under our belt. But that's because we're coming at it through the lens of experience. So you've got a few options. You can figure it out yourself. You can get a mentor and shorten your pain and suffering and production cycle. Or you can take a course, right, or courses and, and figure things out or read books. Um, if you want to shorten the cycle and you still want to have products that are making you money a decade from now, your best bet is to sit at the feet of someone who who has done it and does it on a regular basis. So I'm the publishing side. Lucas is the core side. So end of commercial. But I'm just going to say, if you if you aren't going to do that, if you're going to try to figure it out yourself, give yourself a nice long runway to do it so that you have at least the time to do your due diligence and your research and figure things out. If you want to do it faster, if you want to, you know, build revenue sooner, then you're going to have to spend revenue or spend money to make money, right? right. So, so those are the first things. But let's just go with the year time frame. If I wanted to look uh, at doing one book, one course, and one workbook in a year's time, the where I would spend the lion's share of my first amount of time is on outlining outlining the book because outlining the book does two things. It provides an outline for the physical book that you're going to write. It's providing an outline for the workbook or journal or companion planner that you're going to write. And it's also the basic outline for your course. Right. Yep. So you're actually 
this sounds terrible. Killing three birds with one stone. No birds were harmed in the creation of this IP. I do um, agree with that, by the way. Yes. Three yeah. revenue generators are created with, with one focused period of time where you have figured out what are the contents of the book, the workbook, and the course. They're all different, mm -hmm. but they all work together. That right. is where I would spend the lion's share of my first bunch of time, maybe even over the, the break. I would right. look at what is the content of the book? What what do I want? What, well, I'm going to back up a step and say, what's the job of the book? Right. Right. You know where my brain just my brain. Just, oh, yeah. Like just like uh, hitting the, the scratch on a record right away. <clears throat> well, we can't quite go to the content. <laughs> before we really define what the job is of the book. And I don't think enough people ask this question. I hear um, folks talking about what is the hook of your book? Like what gets people interested in your book? But they don't really think about how is the book going to be generating new business for me a mm -hmm. decade from now, which I think is right. a much stronger, more powerful question. So what is the job of the book? Well, the job that every book has two jobs. One is to do something for the author. Well, what on earth is your book going to do for you? Is it going to get people to pay you to consult with them, to coach them, to speak to them? And or is it going to get people to buy the workbook? And or is it going to get people to buy the course? And or something else? So before you put any pen to paper, and for those of you that are like, I'm 80% of the way done with my book. My question is, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you might be 80% done writing. But are <laughs> your you? draft. Yeah. Right. You might be 80% done writing the book that you have in mind. But, yeah. but is the book that you are writing the book that's going to work hard for you for a long time and, right. and do a job for you? So is it going to, is the, is the, is the milkshake going to bring the boys to the yard? Is the book going to, to do what you want it to do? Right. And if you don't have some intentionality behind it, the answer is probably not. And you're going to end up a year from now with a book that's on your bookshelf that is not in motion, that's not making money for you. So just slow your roll just for a second and say, what's the job of the book? Hmm. Job number one is what's in it for you. Job number two is what does the book do for the reader? Yep. Where is it going to take them? Monetize your book with a course is very clear in that it helps someone to take the nonfiction book that they've written and turn those contents into a course. The job of that book is to establish Lucas as the expert in the course space and to help the reader to navigate the journey of turning their nonfiction book into a course. Very clear on the job. Mm -hmm. So when you're very clear on the job of the book from a content perspective, then you wouldn't write about anything else. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't be throwing random stories in there and you wouldn't be going off on a tangent because it either serves the mission or does not serve the mission. So, so when you're thinking about, I'm going to sit a year from now and I'm going to, I'm going to have my book, my workbook and my course, and I'm just using workbook. So I'm not repeating that whole list of things that you can create. Right. Then you have the ability to create a landing page for your course. So the great news is that if you, if you spend time in the forethought and you really are answering three things, what's the job of the book for the author? What's the job of the book for the reader? And then what are the contents that support the job? Yep. That's it. So that's your basic outline. And there are ways to do that. Um, we're not going to spend our time talking about that because we're going to run out of time. But you've got those three things. And then once you have the content, guess what? Now you can create the landing page for the pre-sale of your course because you're going to cover those contents in your course in depth. So you can start earning the money to pay for your book and your companion and even the production of your course in advance of everything else. And that's where I would start is I would start with what are the contents? And then I actually do the companion last. So I do the outline for the book. I put up the landing page. And you can go watch our three-legged stool video to, for a deep dive into this. Mm -hmm. And then I get busy writing the book. And then I write the book just as fast as my little fingers will take me, um, you know, in my hour every day. And then once the book goes to the editor, who I have booked well in advance, by the way, um, mm -hmm. 
then I get into course creation because I want to get the course out there and earning money even while I'm finishing the collateral assets that go with the course. Right. And that is the, the I think the very fastest path to building a profitable product line in 2024 and, and really making the most of the time that you're going to invest in building that product line in a year's time. I, I like that you targeted a year because there's a compounding obligation when you have multiple products. And what I mean by that in like English is book, <laughs> then workbook or course, then workbook or course. There's three products. And if you yeah. try to layer them all on top of each other at the same time, it's still going to take you forever. You're just dragging it out instead of doing one yes. at a time. And it's to me, yeah. it's not the right way to focus on the product because yeah. You know, when you write the book, you really want the book to be great. And then that great book is a, such a solid foundation for a great course and a great workbook. So, yeah. you know, taking the time to do the book right. So for those that are going a year, what? Like, look, for you to do the book right with an editor, cover designer, doing all the things to get all your accounts set up and everything, you're looking at six months, you know, like comfortably, yeah. but moving quickly, you know, yeah. so six months to a year is not unreasonable. Um, for the no, book. and it goes by so fast. And if yeah. you give the editor two or three weeks to edit the book and you give the mm -hmm. proofreader one to two weeks to proofread the book it's and you get gone. the video editor a couple of weeks to, to yep. edit your videos, you've got to have them top and tailed. You've got to have the music added. You've got to you get your you have to get your retail accounts for your book and your company. Yeah. You've got to get your course platform squared away and you've got to learn it. Um, there's and then there are all the other things that you have to do. Like whatever it is you're doing for money right now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Probably already taking up all 24 hours in your day. It is very possible that intentionally and purposefully with right and good information, you can sail through the process faster, but it's better to give yourself a year and realize that you're ahead of the, uh, ahead of the power curve. And I'll give a great idea. I do um, bespoke books for folks, honoring mm -hmm. quarter bespoke book productions. And when I'm working with an author, we say it's six months to become an author. Yeah. From the day we start to the day we publish, those dates are six months apart. We have a kickoff meeting. We go through what the whole entire schedule looks like. And everyone agrees on what that looks like. And we're all happy and, and so on and so forth. And sometimes it goes faster because it goes faster. Right. <laughs> sometimes... There is a delay of game because sometimes there's a delay of game. Yeah. And so with one author, we were able to order his books with on the 94th day of 180 oh, wow. days wow. because we had the kickoff meeting. The work with the ghostwriter was smooth. The review of the manuscript was smooth. It went right to the editor. It came right back because the book was written by a ghostwriter. So the editorial process costs less, takes less time. Went right to the proofreader, went right. I actually had time for two full proofreads and we still ordered the proofs on the 94th day and had them on the 100th day from when we first started. And I went and delivered the books on the 100th day to the author, which is huge. Right. That's yeah. very, very, very fast to That's produce a fast. quality book. And it's only because I've been to the dance a few hundred times and I know exactly right. what needs to be done. Um, so it's very possible that there will be no stumbling blocks, that you are prolific. And when you do your due diligence on what the contents are as the SME, the subject matter expert, you may be able to just sit down and like crank out that content and then get it over to an editor that you've scheduled well in advance. And you may sail through the process. However, when you are cover designer and you require some back and forth, allow the time for that. When your editor comes back with your manuscript and it looks like a crime scene, and it will, you need to go through those edits and you have to think through the decision. Allowing yourself to, to have the time to take feels so much better. It's like going on a trip and having oh, your yeah. bags by the door the night before when you're like, I know the trip is coming. I know Christmas is coming. My shopping is done. The gifts are wrapped. They're under the tree. There's no stress as opposed to the people that are like, well, I worked up until six o'clock the night before I get on a plane at four in the morning. So I'm up till midnight packing 
getting things ready. I'm at the mall the day before Christmas buying, you know, <laughs> anything that I can get my hand on. Those are just two different, those are just two different ways to do books. And I've done them both ways. I've done them expeditiously and, and I've done them with plenty of time. And I will just say, under the umbrella of plenty of time is a no stress, enjoyable, pleasurable process, which is also why people hire me because they go, I don't want all the pain and suffering on right? right you. I will pay you to do the pain and suffering part, which for me, it's not pain and suffering because I know what I'm doing. So it's it's right. a great trade off. But when you're doing you, you took a, b- a bit of time to do your first book. But then once you get it yeah. done, and you get your sea legs. See what I did there? <laughs> I'm speaking military to you. So nautical. So nautical. Um, <laughs> once you once you have that, you will be able to create additional product lines much faster, and yeah. from a place of power and strength as opposed to stress and weakness, which are I, they're just not advised. I see a lot of people who hurry mm. and rush, and then they get to the last ten percent or they have a date in mind and they go, I just have to get this out because it's really important to get it out. And then they get it out and gosh darn it, they wish they hadn't because they rushed mm-hmm. or they just didn't do it as well as they could. And now they have to do it over. And if you right. don't have time to do it right, when are you going to have time to do it over? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, that's why, I, you know, and you had to talk me off my ledge a little bit when I was first doing the first book, not the, not the writing ledge, because I think yeah. when you're writing, right. you kind right of, yeah. You own the writing part, I think, as a writer. Like everyone, yes. it's like, okay, this is me. But the minute like they think the writing's done, they're like, oh, okay. So now we can be like, we can get to production pretty quickly, right? And it's like, well, you know, we had a really Not good either. conversation where I was like, what does 30 days look like? And you were like, what are you talking about? 30 days? Like you're gonna need you're gonna need 60 days to do what you're what you're talking about. Yeah. And um is it possible in 30 days? Yes. Is it going to damage the quality of the book? Yep. And well, if you don't gonna... know what you're doing and you don't have the team on right. standby, those are the, di- that's the difference, yeah. right? Is when I well, have an, when I have an expedited process, the very mm-hmm. first thing I do is call my team and I go, what do you have available? How soon right. could you do this? Well, well not yeah, and, I'm, and I'm thinking about like people that don't necessarily have access to those resources, right? It's like they're told, by all these different sources that you can you can you can get that KDP account set up. You can get those proofs ordered. Dude, you've, been you've right already and written published in a weekend. Why would you? Yeah, you've done yeah. this. Like what's yeah. the big deal? So like my brain was not calibrated yet. <laughs> I was like I think 30 days sounds like enough time. And you were like actually when you look at like the back and forth you need for another round with a proofreader, the adjustments that are going to be made with the interior design, the these the things the things you it's just a month of that stuff like that's not even like getting to the point where you're like okay amazon i would like to load these files now please and let's see how long that's going to take and the approval and all the things um well if you need a second round of proofs yeah yep right so here's the first time the book i got a proof and all the changes and here's the second round there i only found three but i still found three they would have made me crazy right so then i have two two rounds of proofs yep for a book and it's like, you got to order it. You got to wait for it. You got to order it. You got to wait for it. And that's and so, not prime shipping. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's proof shipping. And it's still pretty fast. They've really yeah. gotten that down. Like, I think I ordered on Wednesday and got them on Sunday night because I'm Ooh. really, I'm very adjacent to the, to the. Yeah. Printer. I don't get that luxury. <laughs> no, Tennessee, no, so I got it very quickly. Um, I'm, I'm seven to 14 days. But but still, the, yeah. like, you have to factor all of that in. And if you just say if it's going to take two weeks, but if it takes seven or five, yeah, right? I ordered them on a Wednesday. I told my client they were coming before Christmas. Right. And I delivered them on December the 2nd. I was able right. to get them on the 1st. You gave yourself six weeks, right? them on the 2nd. Yeah. Well, but I didn't know how long the proofs would take. And I didn't want to over promise and under deliver right and so when i said i have something to bring you are you around he was like yes and not not it, it, i mean it could have been a coffee mug he didn't know right right <clears throat> but it's like i was i'm like a kid at christmas when i get to deliver a book to somebody <laughs> and so i couldn't right. wait i woke up at three o'clock in the morning i was like today's the day i get to take up the book because i'd already seen it i'd gotten it the day before right 
And so, I mean, all very good, all very good things. But if, if I had said, I think it's going to come on Sunday, I'll bring it to you on Monday. And if it hadn't come until Wednesday, then there's all sorts of disappointment. So setting yeah. really great expectations with yourself is very important. So to recap, because we're almost at the top of the hour, this hour always goes by so quickly. The, the goal um, that we wanted to give you, you're welcome. Congratulations, you have a goal, is to build a new product line in 2024. And with any uh, luck preparation meeting opportunity, this product line will still be making you money in 2034. Yes. That's why, that's why I think it's so important to take the time to do it right the first yes. time. Yes. So you like I publish. don't have to worry about that with monetize your book of the course. Like that book would, the minute it published, I knew it could do its job. And it's going to keep, it's yep. going to keep doing its job for a really, really long time. Yep. So we want you to end 2024 with a book that's going to make you money, a workbook or a companion of some kind that's going to make you money and a course that's going to make you money for a decade. And it's interesting because I have the memories pop up about this time of year from when I published, you must write a book in 2016. Mm -hmm. And that book is now a two comma empire for me right. because it is about to be three books, three companion workbooks, three courses and a mastermind. Right. And so that is the gift that just keeps on giving. I did it very quickly. I knew what I was doing back in 2016, but we are on the verge of the eighth year of that book's life. And in seven years, it it is two books and two workbooks and three courses and a mastermind and also separate, but not separate my bespoke publishing service. Right. And in February, I will release, you must monetize your book and I must monetize my book workbook. And so then it will be three books, three workbooks and three courses and a mastermind. And this is not about me. I only tell all of you that to say, I'm really glad I published a quality book because it built into something else. And if I, if I had had a me back in 2016, I would have said, you're going to want a workbook and a course to right. go with this, right? There are people right. who are going to want to put this into practice with a workbook. And there are people that are really going to want to mentor with you at a deeper level through a course. So right. go ahead and do that. I had to follow the yellow brick road as it were, right? To, right. to, to follow the breadcrumbs and figure that out. And so if you think about the opportunity you have right now, as you're going into a quiet time of year to sit down and think about the contents of it, I'm really excited for what it is you will create in the new year with the three legged stool. Yeah. And, and, and just to kind of put a, put a date on the other two products, cause we've talked about the timeline for the book and I, I know we only have like two minutes. So I want to get this in quick, but yes, you know, please. you can take that same timeline and just abbreviate just a little bit for the workbook, but not much. The workbook is a book. It's a full book project. Yes. The, the creation part might be a little shorter because you're not writing as many words, obviously. Yes. And you've already done a lot of the work to develop the book. Um, but there's some other things that are a little unique about a workbook and you're going to have to work through those, but you still have editing, you still have proofreading, you still have design, you still have publication. So the workbook will take a little bit shorter time than the book. The course, yep. surprising mo to most people when they first talk to them as clients, they're like, how long? I'm like, I wouldn't do this in less than two months. And they, they just cannot believe it will take that long okay. until they get in there and realize, oh, there's like a lot of launch planning that comes with this. So even if you have the course produced in that two month period, if you don't give it two months, if you give it a month, you, you, you don't have very long to promote it. You don't have very long to build a list of people for it. Um, use the book to build the audience for the course. Use the book to capture emails, to sell the course to and the workbook to. Let the book do its job. Do the book first, then take on the workbook and the course for that reason your course will market much better if there's someone there to buy it. <laughs> so, and you're going to feel oh. a way different sense of pressure with selling the course than you are with the book, because the book in many ways that the industry is selling your book a little bit, there's platforms that are, you know, accessible and things like that with your course. It's pretty much you. And if you don't have some type of audience built up, you're going to be talking to a very small number of people at first, and it's going to be a little harder to convert that. So, give yourself two to three months for the course, you'll feel better. So you, this is yep. where you come up with a year, right? So if you did six months, 
two to three months, two to three months. There you go. Yep. There you go. All right, guys, any questions for us, please drop them in the chat because we're almost done here. Honore, we are we are wrapping 24. This is our last live of the year. It is our last live of the year. It's been a great year, Lucas. Thank you for meeting me almost every Thursday and, and having these conversations that we hope are impacting our listeners and our readers. And if you're a longtime listener and lurker and you haven't said anything, you know, send up a flare, send us a note, <laughs> leave a comment. We want to know that, that we're helping you to build the empire that you want to build, to, to write the books you want to write and build the income streams that you want to build. And that's why we're here. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And I encourage you guys to go check out the podcast because what we've done is we've built um, a whole layer of content outside of these live episodes that are just pre-recorded, published on our YouTube channel and on the podcast. And we're going to be publishing all of our lives as podcast episodes throughout the next couple of, of months. So it's going to be a lot, a lot of podcast content that's just like one central place to get all the goodies. And I encourage you guys to go check those out and do that. So um, when yeah. we come back January 11th, I think it is. Yep. Yep. We're going to have we three um, releases though. So we're going to, oh, you're yeah. still going to have some content for us. If you're used to tuning in on Thursdays, go ahead and tune in because, um, because we will have content for you to consume over the next few weeks. And we have a lot of back content for you to consume as well. But when we come back, we are going to have Cameron from Plotter join us and talk about all sorts of magical things. And we, that's it. That's the, all the spoiler you're getting is that we get to meet with Cameron from Plotter, which is an application for plotting out your book fiction or nonfiction. And so that's the end of any spoiler that we have, but Cameron will be joining us in January and we will get to have a great conversation with him about what plotter is and how you can use it when writing your book. So your job right now is just to outline it, just do a little outlining and we will pick up where we left off in just a few weeks. And we hope that you have a great holiday season, whether you are with friends or family or hanging out with your dog or your cat or whatever you're doing, we hope that it's just a magical, uh, rejuvenating, refreshing, wonderful time for you. That's right. Looking forward to it, guys. 2024 is going to be great. Wrap up 23, get that time with the family, and then we're going to all be on fire. <laughs> yes. A fire, a sustainable fire. That's right. That's right. We're going to come back and you're not even going to know. <laughs> the people that left maniacs? at the end of the year were very tired. These people are very energized. So just be prepared. <laughs> be prepared for caffeinated, rested, and energized Honoré and Lucas because we're going to right. eat, eat my body weight in pumpkin pie and mom's homemade Italian chicken soup. So we're good. Ooh, that sounds awesome. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you in January. We'll see you January 11th. And we wish you all a very happy holiday with your families and loved ones. And if you need anything, you know how to reach out to us. And uh, we'll see you guys at the Empire Builders Masterclass.com. All, right. all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Honoré. Thank you, Lucas.